Some of the content covered may be graphic in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. So this this one's a little bit more of a medical miracle, not not too much into the haunted or spooky or paranormal stuff, anything like that. But it is the unknown. It is pretty wild. Uh, so I'm gonna give you my take on it, and then we'll just roll with it. December 20th, 1980, in Langby, Minnesota, 19-year-old Jean Hilliard was driving home from her friend's house when her car slid off the road and into a ditch. This is a bit more of like the remote gravel road, not the high traffic streetlight stuff you see in the city. Even though it was around negative 22 degrees outside, remember this is Minnesota, crazy sure. cold mm. winters out yeah. there. She decided to get out of the car and walk to her friend's house rather than just stay in her car with the off chance somebody might drive by and be able to help. She figured if she stayed in her car, she would just end up freezing to death. I'm sorry, did the car die? No, she slid into a ditch. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Fucking listen. Hi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So her friend only lived about two miles away, so she gets out, she starts walking, and like I said, negative 22, she really wasn't dressed to be out in that weather. You know, gloves, mittens, the, the usual, but we're not talking like full on snowsuit and all that. Right. No, I do the same thing. Like if I'm leaving and I know I'm going to only be in the car and then in another building, um, I really just wear a sweatshirt. And sometimes I'm like, nah, that's probably not the wisest idea. Right. So she made it all the way to his driveway before she collapsed. Now, at this point, it's about 1 a.m. It's obviously much colder now. After laying on the ground for about six hours, I mean, she was basically just turned into a human icicle, just frozen solid. Gotcha. She wasn't noticed again until the next morning at about 7 a.m. by her friend Wally Nelson. Wally walked out of his house, found Jean's body just lying there. He said she was so stiff, and this is, it's kind of comical when you think about it, but in reality, it's not. He, she was so stiff, he couldn't get her in his car. He actually had to load her in diagonally across the seats. Because he couldn't even bend her. Like, her wow. joints her joints were frozen solid. Her eyelids were frozen open. I mean, it's it literally like something you would see in a cartoon. Yeah. I just picture, like, a lid, like, beep, beep, blah, 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 like yeah, a dude, coin, like, flame. It's Yeah, I mean, like I said, when you think about it, it sounds kind of comical, but in the reality... No, it's, it's serious shit. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he said her face just looked like a ghost and he was under the impression like, hey man, she's dead, but I gotta, you know, I gotta get her to the hospital. Right. So. That was my question. I was just going to say, so he f still had a feeling she was alive or he, I mean, I, a no, lot of people would have figured. Oh. I, I think it, it's kind of like, well, what do you do? I mean, you if know? I, dude, if I found you frozen like that, I would assume that, you know. I assume the worst. Right. But right. I think because it's, it is a smaller, maybe more rural town, he probably thought it would be quicker to load her up than call an ambulance. Sure, Good sure. Point. Yep. And especially, you know, I, you don't know what the weather is like in Minnesota. They get a ton of snow, a bunch of cold. It might take, it might take them an hour plus to get there. Right. He loads her up, takes her to the hospital. It's about an hour. They get there at about 8 a.m. The doctors feared that she would die mainly because, like, she was so cold they couldn't even take her temperature. They, if they tried to give her anything like a shot, you know, intravenously, the needle wouldn't pierce her skin because it was literally frozen solid. They they couldn't move any joints. They couldn't even move her mouth. I mean, even if they wanted to give her warm liquids, it was literally like, just think of you just loaded up a block of ice and, you know, that's it. Yeah, you never really think about that. You can't really, even when, it's kind of gross, but like, even when, you know, you try to get a frozen pack of hamburgers to like split, because you're trying to throw them on the grill and you didn't thaw them all day, that's really fucking hard to do. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. So, like, imagine, like, this being a person, you can't do anything to them to try to help them. So even though her eyelids were frozen open solid, her actual eyes had no response to light. So, like, everything's frozen. They're just like, man, there's really no signs of life. But they took her pulse, 
and even though it was very very low about 12 beats per minute it was a pulse so technically she was still alive almost like cryogenically frozen if you want to think about it like that so the doctors take and i read everything from you know an electric blanket to just warming packs hot water bottle that whole thing and they just covered her with it and really at that point what can you do besides try to thaw her out and hopefully save her life by 1 p.m she started to make noise she was actually moaning so they're like okay great sign of life there's a possibility that we're going to be able to save her now the doctor dr george sather is telling the parents that you know even if we're able to save her there's no way she's going to be completely intact i mean she's going to lose her legs she's going to end up maybe losing fingers like something because she actually had frostbite that started to set in i mean i would imagine when you're frozen solid dry yeah yeah i think one. yeah but i wonder like if you get frozen fast you know if you freeze fast do you get frostbite well i'm gonna get to that yeah okay Sorry. so like i said by 1 p.m she starts to make noise um you know, later that night, her hands and arms actually began to thaw out, and you, you know, she had a little bit of movement, you could call it that, but at this point, like, the majority of her body is still pretty frozen. By the third day, she was actually able to move her legs. Now, she stayed, she spent six days in the ICU, and then was moved to a normal room. She spent 49 days total in the hospital. On the 49th day, obviously, she was completely thawed out, she made a full recovery. She walked herself out of the hospital. Holy shit. The frostbite that started to set in just disappeared. It healed itself, so it wasn't like full-blown frostbite. Didn't lose limbs, didn't lose a fingernail. Like, it was literally like someone put her in the freezer and then took her out and set her out, and then she was just like, she, she didn't get sick. Like, she didn't get anything. It was literally just like she was frozen, and then someone thought her out and was like, here you go. Do they have any photos of her frozen? I couldn't find any. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it was the 80s. It wasn't like now where everybody... I mean, if the, if that happened now, the dude probably would have came out and took pictures on his phone before he did anything. Right. Yeah, selfie. So did she remember anything? Yeah. she. Re I mean, she, when she was frozen... Yeah, that's what I mean. No. And she remembers, like, walking, passing out at the driveway, uh -huh. and then once she kind of regained her normal, like, body functions that's kind of when her memory came, came back. back so she doesn't remember the actual incident wow now there's a couple of theories as to why what happened actually happened they said her organs didn't freeze possibly because she had alcohol in her system which prevented any permanent damage from happening i don't know if that means like hey if you go out and get hammered and then, you know, you go yeah. lay, lay down in the street that you're going to freeze and be fine. I'm pretty sure that's not what they're getting at. I think no, no. Yeah. it's more because, and this is like what you were saying, she froze so quickly, like, you know, within a couple hours, she was frozen solid that there actually wasn't any time for her organs to fail. Oh, yeah, that so makes sense. It's kind of like you were super cooled so quick that it's like, boom, instant freeze. Now you're preserved. Whereas, like, the cold would yeah. be breaking down the body and the organs. I, you know, I'd be interested to know because they talk about, like, freezing, like, uh, like Walt Disney's head or t uh, what was his, the baseball player that was supposedly frozen? Uh, Ted Williams, is that him? I don't know. There was a, yeah, well, anyway, um, they said, like, that that is impossible to do because when you're, when you're frozen, the cells expand and blow it out and basically explode. In your brain? Yes. It's just like when you put water in a jar and freeze it, it breaks the jar. Yeah, if it has Same nowhere to go. Same thing happens to your cells, yeah. That's so, what I was wondering about her brain. I mean, you know, I mean, how it was able to sustain that, those temperatures. Well, I think, like what we were saying, it has something more to do with it happening so, so quickly. Fast, yeah. As yeah. opposed to... And she had a heartbeat too, so she was well, blood was still pumping. That's what I want to get to for the next, like, kind of the final, the final reason of, you know, why this is a possibility. And these are all theories. You know, you could call it a miracle. You could call it whatever you want. The final thing is that in theory, there's kind of like a hibernation that humans can go into when they get really cold. Now we're not talking like, hey, I got hypothermia. I'm talking more like this, you know, like cryostasis 
it was worded as a hibernation and basically what it is it lowers your vitals so even though you're frozen like you said you still have a heartbeat so you still have a little bit of circulation blood flow yeah blood flow which is obviously not keeping you warm enough to stay not frozen but it's also keeping oxygen and everything going through your organs and all that essentially basic body function is still happening it's just on such a slow level even the metabolic rate is non-existent so you're not breaking anything down in your body it's essentially just being preserved by it being kept at such a slow rate it's like a uh biological standby yeah and the reason that this is pretty important is a big theory on more like a medical technology what they want to try to do if someone has a stroke they want to be able to freeze them work on their body and possibly come up with something that they can do to you know fix whatever happened from the stroke or the heart attack because if you slow it down, it becomes like a slow motion. The damage isn't happening. So once right. you freeze them, take the time to figure out how you can fix it. You unfreeze them and then work on the body. Gotcha. Now, obviously, if you're frozen, you can't cut into the body or, you know, nothing like that. But it gives you time to think about what your plan of attack should be. And it would also probably prevent complications during surgery and stuff like that, you know. Right. I mean, that's kind of why it's like a whole big... There's like a whole school of thought on how they can use cryostasis and this you know, hibernation, if you want to call it that, by slowing down the vitals and being able to work on, come up with a plan and work on stuff. Whereas, you know, certain things like an aneurysm, if that happens, you can be dead within minutes. Right. You know, if they're able to apply something like that, where they can come up with, okay, we have to do this, this, and this, thaw them out, boom, you're done, you might have just saved a life. Right. Yeah. So, like I said, call it a miracle, call it dumb luck, call it whatever you want. Uh, it's still a pretty interesting story. Coming up on the next episode of Type 3 TV. Many people believe that the video game was a CIA experiment to test one's mental and physical agility as a method to recruit soldiers. Well, that's it for this week's episode. If you like what you saw, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below. I'm John Wodzinski. From the Mistake on the Lake, this is Type 3 TV. Over and out.